Welcome again to the course on Radio Signal Processing for Music Applications. In the first part of this lecture, we started talking about the short time Fourier transform. Now, let's continue. We will cover quite a few topics, but each one is quite short. We will first uh, review the concept of the STFT and analysis window, then talk about the window size, then the FFT size, then the hop size, then what we call the time frequency compromise and then once we have covered all that we can do the inverse of this uh, analysis process so we'll do the inverse of the short time Fourier transform and finally we can put it all together into an analysis synthesis system that can be used to analyze and synthesize any sound. So we saw this equation in the first part of the lecture uh, we now know that the short time Fourier transform is the time varying version of the DFT and that windowing is a key concept uh, to understand the STFT. So for example in these, uh, in these plots if we start from a violin sound that we can listen to okay then the, the magnitude spectrum uh, of one fragment, of one of the frames, is quite different depending on the window we use. If we use a rectangular window, uh, we can see uh, uh, this uh, first uh, magnitude spectrum. If we use the Blackman window, we can use uh, this uh, second one. Okay, so now let's try to understand a few more things about uh, this, uh, the short time for a transform, about the windowing process. So we talked about different types of windows in the last class, but these windows can be of any size. And what is the effect of this size? So here we see an example of uh, the same sound and choosing the same window, but with different sizes. Uh, one is uh, with size one, 128 and the other is with uh, a size 1024 clearly very different and the result is amazingly different. The magnitude spectrum of uh, the small window is, uh, has very little information, it uh, has very few samples, it has uh, basically 128 samples and in the larger window we see quite a lot. We see a lot more detail of the sound of what's going on. So that's going to be uh, a very important compromise uh, to be uh, done when we use the window size. And the phase spectrum, of course, it's also different, but um, a lot of these uh, issues will, will be uh, much more clear in the magnitude spectrum. So we'll focus a lot on discussing the effect on magnitude spectrum. Okay, another uh, important issue uh, that has uh, a significant effect, even though it's a tiny difference, is the concept of even and odd size window. So we can take the same window and have uh, a size 32, which is an even size, or we have a size 31, just one sample less, and it's an odd size. If we look at the magnitude spectra, they basically look the same. Two magnitude spectra are the same. Uh, the difference is not significant, but the phase spectrum is quite different. In one, in the even size, uh, there is a slope. So these are, by the way, of course, centered around zero. So uh, clearly, if it's uh, an even side, it cannot be perfectly centered because we have to have a sample at zero and then if it's even it will have different number of samples on the right hand or on the left hand. In the other hand if we have an odd size window we can have a sample right in the middle and then have the same number of samples on both sides. Therefore it can be perfectly symmetric around zero and therefore get the zero phase value that we have talked about uh, before. Okay, So whenever we can we're going to be using odd size windows. Okay, the window size uh, has been chosen according to some resolution criteria, the number of periods or the resolution that we need to have, and we'll be, again be talking more about that. 
but now we have to choose the FFT size, which is independent of the window size, because we have the opportunity to do zero uh, padding. Um, so in this uh, example, we, we show, we start from a given uh, window size, 512, and if we choose the same window size than the FFT size, we get the, this first magnitude plot, and we, we see a, a pretty decent uh, magnitude spectrum with all these uh, peaks that correspond to the harmonics of this obosum. But if we do uh, an FFT size larger, so we do an FFT size in this case of 2048 samples, so we zero but quite a bit, is four times larger the FFT size than the window size, we see a spectrum which is much smoother, in fact much nicer. And this is something that is going to be very much desirable. Something that uh, we will be looking for is a spectrum that are quite smooth so we can identify things uh, much better. Okay. Uh, then the final step of the short time Fourier transform analysis loop is uh, the advancement of the, the windows, the advancement of the, the frames, what we call the hopping, the hop size. So the window advances eight samples after each DFT. And then with this equation, we see the effect of this hopping. So uh, by just taking the window a function and hopping by a given age, we get a function, A, that uh, depends on the, this hopping factor and, of course, of the window size. And here we have two examples, two hopping factors, different. Okay, in the first one, with a window of 201 samples, we are hopping 100 samples, like half of it. And the red uh, function is this A uh, function, the, the sum of these uh, windows. Clearly, it's not uh, a very smooth result. It has like this oscillation, it's basically we call a modulation that in fact will be heard in the, in the resynthesis uh, that we will do with the short time Fourier transform. On the second plot, we see uh, the hopping of 50, so basically one-fourth of the window size. And apart from the boundaries, in which we see clearly that there is uh, the effect uh, kind of a distortion, uh, all the middle is very much like a straight line. And this is the kind of things that we would like to have. We would like that the, the hopping does not affect, so it uh, can maintain an identity, and uh, so this uh, A function should be a straight line. Now we can put all these concepts together to analyze a real and complex signal, like a piano phrase. So first let's uh, listen to the input uh, sound. Okay, so choosing all the parameters in the, STF, in the STFT, it has a number of effects in the output. The most important one is what we call the time frequency compromise. On the top uh, plot, we see the, the magnitude spectrum of the whole STFT analysis. So basically, it's a sequence of DFT. The vertical axis is the frequency, the horizontal axis is the time, and the color intensity basically is the magnitude, uh, the magnitude value in the magnitude spectrum. Okay, so here we see very clearly the attacks of the piano and kind of the horizontal aspect correspond to the harmonics of the piano. But on the second uh, plot, which has a bigger uh, window and FFT size, four times, so it has 1,024 samples for the window, we see that the horizontal lines are much better defined, even though in exchange of the vertical lines of the attacks that are not as crisp, as clear. So this is what we call time frequency compromise. If the window size is small, we might get a good time resolution in exchange of a poor frequency resolution. In, if we take a bigger window size, we will get a better frequency resolution. So that's what we see, better horizontal lines. 
in exchange of not so good time resolution, so not so good crisp like attacks as uh, we see in this second plot. And then, of course, typically we only show the magnitude spectrum, uh, but the phase has also valuable information. So in here we see both the magnitude spectrogram and the phase spectrogram. In fact, what we are seeing is the derivative of the phase. And if we take the derivative, what we are seeing is uh, kind of the when there is a, a flat region on when there is a, a, a phase that changes a lot. So in fact, here we can also kind of see this horizontal structure that relates to the stable uh, peaks that correspond to the, the, the harmonics. So whenever the color is, is uh, more clear, it means that uh, it's more stable. And when we see this darker color, it means that there is a bigger slope so that there is a, a bigger phase change. So it's a little bit harder to read this uh, and visualize this uh, phase spectrum, but they have some very interesting information that we're going to be using. Unlike the DFT, the short time Fourier transform has the inverse uh, transform. If we do things right, we can recover the original sound from the amplitude and phase spectrogram. How to do that? We're what we're basically doing is what we call overlap and adding these different output spectra. So we'll be computing every individual spectra of uh, every frame, so x sub l, and we take the inverse DFT of every x sub l, as we show here, and then there is this shifting and summing which correspond to this idea of uh, shifting and adding over the previous frame in, in, in such a way that we basically compensate all this windowing and we recover the output signal. So basically the output frame of one single frame is going to be this YW sub L, which is going to be the result of one fragment of the input sound multiplied by the window. And then the overall output sound will be the sum of these windowed output fragments and uh, what we see here is in this equation is we identify the effect of the window. Basically we have this summing over all the windows and this is the possible distortion or artifact that might be uh, applied using this uh, process. So if this sum of the windows is a constant and is 1, the input will be equal to the output. But if the sum of windows is not equal to a constant, a constant then we're definitely going to have some distortion modulation that will be heard in the output sound. So graphically, basically, we are just doing exactly the same than in the, in the, synth, in the analysis. Uh, so it's the inverse process, so we are overlapping and adding every single fragment to recover the whole signal. And now that we know how to analyze and synthesize a sound with the STFT, we can build a system, and we will uh, show that in the, uh, and we will implement that in the programming lectures. And this is the diagram of a complete analysis synthesis system using the short time Fourier transform. So we have the input sound, X of N, then we have the window that we apply and we use to select portions of the sound. And from this windowed fragment, we compute the FFT and results in the magnitude and phase spectrum. Then at every frame, we do the inverse of that and recovers the output uh, sound, which is going to be uh, a windowed signal because it has the window uh, in it. And then with the overlap add factor, and, and if we do it correctly, we generate an output signal that should be identical if the window and the hop size is correct to the input signal. So this would be an example of a complete sound analysis and synthesis uh, of a sound that varies in time. We start with the piano sound that we already heard. We see the magnitude spectrum with the given window size, FFT size and hop size in a way that the overlap is correct. We see the derivative of the phase spectrum. 
and then we uh, see the Y, the output sound, which is the uh, inverse of this uh, spectrum. And we can listen to that. And clearly, in this case, it's identical to the original because we did the hopping and the windowing uh, correctly. So again, quite a bit of references are available on this topic, uh, both on Wikipedia and on Julius' uh, website. And uh, that's all for uh, this class. Uh, with this second part of the lecture, we have completed the topic on the short time Fourier transform. We now know how to analyze and synthesize uh, any sound. And of course, in the demonstration classes and in the uh, programming classes of this week, we're going to put that in practice. But even that, this is just the beginning of the interesting stuff. We will now be able to really do powerful things building on top of the short time for a transform. So stay with me and uh, you will see. See you next time.